interact with them in a real game and the way inter they interact, the way they respond to adversity, because adversity is going to happen. I mean, it's going to happen in the first game. At some point, it's going to happen. And, um, and how we overcome that and how we react to that as coaches is going to be a, a growing process. And so I don't think you know a lot about your team or about your group until you start playing real games. And I think that identity forms over the course of the season with every year. And every year is different, right? So if you just in games, have you decided if you're going to be up or down during games? I'll be down. And why, can you explain why you like that? I like to talk to the quarterback in between drives. Um, there's two things, and I've been up and down. Um, I've been down more than I've been up. Um, I like communicating with the quarterback, you know, during the course of the drive. That way, if I want to change things, it gets changed instantly, right? There's a lot of our offense that changes at any point in time before the snap. And so, not that we do that all the time, but it happens, right? And so going through a third person sometimes slows that down. Um, that's not the biggest reason. The biggest reason is in between drives, I like to look in your eye and have conversations with you and sit down next to you and see your demeanor and see how you're doing and, and then have the next drive. And every drive is kind of their own little lifespan. And then we sit over, talk about what happened, good, bad, or indifferent, uh, talk about what we're gonna do. Uh, if we need to flush something bad, then I can be more of a, hey man, let's, you know, everybody, you know, you gotta get over it, you know? Or if it makes the greatest play in the world, it's the same thing. Hey, you gotta get over it, you know? You gotta play the next play. And so I just like that that interpersonal contact that you get when you're on the sideline that you don't necessarily get from the box. What, I've always liked that. What have the those interpersonal things, ha what have those been like since you arrived with Tyler? But you just kind of build a relationship, you know, before games start, but just working through spring. So what, what have those connections been like so far? Yeah, I mean, I think his demeanor is, um, is really good. You know I mean? He doesn't really get too up or too down, which is what you want. You want to kind of stay right there in the middle, you know, and just keep playing ball. You know I mean? Our job, is to just put the ball in play. You know, is routine plays win games. And and anytime you try to get outside of those parameters, typically is when bad things happen. So just, just keep going forward, keep putting the ball in play. Ultimately, when bad things do happen, you gotta get over it, right? But his demeanor is, is very even keel. And again, I mean, just like my answer to her was, I mean, I, you won't really know that until you get put under the direct fire. And so there's going to be some unknowns in that sense. But I can kind of tell with his overall demeanor that he'll get over things pretty quick. He said the, sorry, he said the other day that he's been working on footwork a little bit, improving on that. What, can you touch on that a little bit? What have you seen? What have you worked on? Yeah, I mean, just getting your feet in the ground. I mean, um, the process of eliminating negative plays, you know, I mean, getting the ball out of your hand quick is, a, is important, right? High importance. And uh, you can't get the ball out unless your feet are in the ground. And that's just, I know that isn't earth shattering, but that's just facts, right? And so being able to get his feet in the ground when the time is right is important. And so um, you can lose a, a second, split second here and now. It actually happened a couple of times in the spring game, you know, uh, where the ball could have got out, right? And so there's a learning process in that, especially with the new system. And so a lot of our offense is you know, him distributing the ball quickly, which is what we want, right? And then obviously we're gonna take shots when they present themselves, but we wanna get the ball out of our hand. And uh, and you can do that uh, more efficiently if your feet are in the ground. Coach, who, who's gonna be the eyes upstairs for you while you're on the field? Who's kind of the main guy you're gonna count on? We'll go through that as camp goes. I'm not ready to talk about that yet. I mean, I could, okay. but I'm just not ready. Gonna hold back on it, yeah. Well, I, you know, I mean, look. <laughs> I got you. you know, people have their job to do, and you know, I have my job to do, so I mean, let's... You know. All right, just curious. I uh, wanted to ask you specifically about some of the transfers you guys got in after spring football. I know receiver, uh, Shamar Kirk, obviously, yeah. uh, Tyler Harrell, and I think who else you guys, I think Luke Cristobal, one of the offensive linemen. Uh, just can you speak, and A.J. Allen, the, the running A.J., back. yeah. Yeah, can you speak to, to those new arrivals post-spring? Well, I mean, I can speak to their just overall attitudes, mm -hmm. and they've been awesome to be around, you know? Okay. Um, hadn't had any issues with them. I think they've, from what it seems, they've picked up on everything yeah. very quickly. Uh -huh. Some of those guys have played a lot of football. Uh, I'm excited to see those guys in camp. You know, I mean, you know, I, I know some of the stuff they've done during the summer. I think um, we got a talented group. Mm -hmm. We got some guys that can run. We got some guys that can make plays. 
and uh, I'm excited to, to see them play. You know, I don't know. I haven't seen them yet, but I know that they're. Um, I know their attitudes have been off the chart, which is really all I care about at this point. Right. Is uh, because when you when you're into a new place and you're learning a new offense, and uh, not everything's going to go your way every day. You know, so watching how they are attitude-wise is important to me yeah. because once we get out there as a group, you can control some of that. You know, but I think their overall attitude and the way they fit into the group, yeah. fit into the culture here, has been extremely positive. Thank you. Coach, your impression so far of Jakari Brown and some of the biggest things you worked on with him in spring? I thought, you know, he probably made as many strides as anybody in the spring from the beginning till was 15 practices, right? And so um, just trying to work with him specifically on, you know, I don't remember who asked me about Tyler's feet. You know, I mean, every quarterback has things to work on in their lower body, right? Uh, really calmness in their lower body, right? I want I want calm feet. Typically, calm feet equal clear clear conscious line of th thought, right? So, um, with, with JB, you know, just having, when he has some quietness to his feet, I mean, the guy is super accurate, um, you know, and he gets, that calmness loses it a little bit, that's when the inaccuracy comes. And so I thought his overall process through spring has been really, really good. And I'm excited to, to see him in camp, you know. Dominant, I mean, the, the, the guy has an extremely dominant trait. You know, I mean, he's, he's big, he's athletic, he's got a strong arm. I need to harness all that stuff into what we do on offense. And I'm very pleased with him right now. His attitude is unbelievable. I mean, uh, the interactions with him on a daily basis are off the chart. You know, he is an unbelievably strong team guy. Um, and the thing about him is, you know, he wants to be coached in a way to where he can do all the things we're asking him to do. It's been very pleasant. Shane, what, what excites you most about working with him? Now you spent a little bit of time with Tyler. What kind of excites you most about just working with him and having a full season with him? Well, I mean, I think, first of all, I think Tyler is an extremely talented guy. You know, I mean, I think his his skill sets are uh, similar to some guys we've had in the past. Um, more so than, than his, you know, physical skill sets, he has an extremely high football IQ. You know, his capacity day to day is extremely high. And what I mean by that is, I mean, if I change something from day to day, not necessarily dramatically, but there's certain things that I can do with him at this point that I, you typically think can't do with quarterbacks the first year, you know? I mean, his capacity for movements and different things that you would like to do offensively to be creative, uh, you can do, and he, he can handle it. Uh, it's not only him, I mean, he's gotta be able to disperse all the information to everybody too. And he's gotta make sure everybody's on the same page. And some of our stuff is, um, it's hard to communicate, to be honest with you. You know, I mean, some of the stuff that's elaborate, it's uh, it's long, and uh, and he does a good job, and he has a very high capacity with really anything you throw at him. Um, Tyler Harrell has come here with eight months to invest into his career, and this first month and a half, he's done an excellent job, um, really developing. Um, catching the football, running routes, understanding that he's really fast and he doesn't have to run really fast all the time. Learn how to control his speed and give himself a chance to be really uh, effective, not only in the deep balls, but the intermediate and short game. What does Shamar Kirk do well? Shamar Kirk is a yak guy. He is a guy that when, once he gets the ball in his hands, He's a running back. Um, he has really good quickness. He has really good vision. Um, and he, he doesn't lack confidence one bit. Um, believes in himself. Has worked really hard to get himself to where he is now. And uh, really excited about his future. There's a lot of freshman receivers out here that very talented guys from Ray Ray to, Bob, to Robbie. Do you, any of those guys remind you of anyone that ever played out here? guys uh i would say i wasn't here when santana first got here uh, but just thinking back on the things that they said about him 
being a track guy, only having six or eight catches his senior year, um, Ray Ray kind of reminds me of Santana from a standpoint of he's really fast and really explosive. Um, I don't think he's really had a chance to develop as a wide receiver, uh, more of an athlete. And I think from spring to now or since January to now, he's done a really good job transforming himself into a wide receiver instead of an athlete, uh, catching the ball more consistently, catching the difficult balls, and, and using his hands more than his body. Because what happens when you catch the ball with your body, your body leaves the ground, and now you have to wait for yourself to get back down to make moves where he can pluck the ball out of the air, and he can still make moves with his feet still on the ground. So I uh, expect a lot of good things from him this year. And Jacoby George, Tyler Van Dyke mentioned that he thinks he could be a big time guy this year. What has Jacoby developed mostly in this year? Uh, you know, I think he's starting to understand that nothing's going to be given to him. Um, he understands that in order for him to have what he wants, he has to go take it. And that's not just taking it on Monday and Tuesday. And then Monday and Tuesday is supposed to make people give you something on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. He understands now that this is an everyday job. This is an everyday mindset. And this is an every rep opportunity to put himself in position to be where he wants to be. So he's worked himself into that. And he's done a great job this summer. Kevin, I, I know people, I'm sure, before I came in, Tyler Harrell, but is he as fast as he says he is? <laughs> he's, he's as fast as they're saying he is. Um, he, he, is, he, is he is crazy fast. Um, and the good thing about it is he knows he is. So, like I told him earlier, he has to learn how to control that speed because somebody that's that fast, they can find themselves being out of control and if you're running so fast, you can't stop. It's, it's, it's hard to stop moving that fast. So the objective is to get him to understand I can run four or five with the ability to tap into four two. And, and so if I run four or five, that defender is going to believe because I'm running, I'm running at my fastest. So that gives him a chance to control it at the top of his routes. And one more question before I leave, and that is I, just so many years I've been hearing that the receivers are going to be better, receivers are going to be better. Um, is it true this year? I mean, I, what, you know, what's the ceiling for you guys? What do you think? Oh, that's the thing about it. I say the sky's the limit. Uh, I don't think that there is a limit to what we can do on the field. Uh, what we have to do is we have to come out here every day and take every rep like it's a championship rep. Uh, whether that's individual, uh, whether that's special teams, whether that's warming up. I mean, you have to have a championship mentality in the meetings when you're taking notes. Those have to be championship notes. Like, everything counts because once you get on the, on the field and it's go time, you don't have to turn up. You don't have to do anything extra. The mentality is in you and you can go out there and do those things. But you think the skill is there? I believe that the skills are there, yep.